Recently, the Ukrainian President Zelensky introduced the new F-16s to the public. The aircraft we have seen are ex-Danish aircraft equipped with Amram's B's and Sidewinder's M's. These are still functional but old weapons. But they were also equipped with something quite unusual, whose there are not that many around, and it is very interesting stuff. Look at this picture. Do you notice anything strange? Look at this pylon, it looks different than the usual, does it? Well, it has a good reason to be different. It is a fully functional self-protection pod produced by the Danish firm Therma. Point is, it is not a pod. It is a proper pylon and you can still hang other stores below it. This is a very clever solution that saves one of the hard points while having minimal drag and weight penalty while providing capabilities that the F-16 AM MLU doesn't have on its own. I'm honestly surprised that we don't see more of these around, but the point is, what is inside these pylons? Pylons mounted on the Ukrainian aircraft have been most likely inherited by Denmark and the Netherlands, who purchased them for their air forces. We have seen two types of pylons, the PITS Plus and the ESIPS Plus, one mounted on the starboard side and the other on the port side of the aircraft. These pylons are MIL STD 1760 compliant. This is the NATO standard to electrically interface the store with the aircraft. And to be honest, nobody would buy them if they weren't compliant. A 1760 compliant pylon provides power either 28 volt DC or 115 200 volt AC. It can also provide 270 volt DC if needed with a main and an auxiliary power bus. Because obviously, all but the dumbest of the stores require power to work and keep their internal batteries charged. The MIL STD 1760 also offers MIL STD 1553 data bus connections, which are still very much used to exchange data between the aircraft armament computer and the weapons computer. For other types of signals, like for example a video from a pod, there is a coaxial cabling available, and for very high speed digital connections, there is also fiber optic. The pylon determines if a store is attached to a specific connector that is open when the store is released, that is also used to implement various release safety protocols. Covering the 1760 standard would take a video on its own, but it is interesting to show how complex is the integration of a weapon system on an aircraft. I still come around people who believe that missiles are more or less like bullets. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In the PITS Plus pylon, there is a dispenser system for chuffs and flares that complements the dispensers already present on the aircraft. The dispenser can obviously be activated manually, but also be connected to another system on the pylon for automatic dispensing. What do you think these round devices are? Any idea? Well, if you said a missile approach warning system, you're right. <laughs> This is the ANAAR-60 MILDS system built by the German Hensoldt, and it is a pretty neat piece of technology. I believe it is the Block 2 variant, but I'm not entirely sure. The system features six sensors, each one with a field of view of 115 degrees. Three are installed on the PITS Plus pylon and three on the ESIPS Plus. Altogether, they offer full spherical coverage. Each sensor is sensitive to ultraviolet radiation at frequencies where there is little or no solar emission because it is absorbed by the atmosphere. The sensor detects the ultraviolet emission of the exhaust plume of the approaching missile. You may wonder why ultraviolet and not infrared. Well, ultraviolet compared with infrared is less penetrating in clouds and mist and the missile plume is less bright in UV than in infrared. These are very good observations, and in fact, infrared-based MOSE systems do exist. 
With UV, you are trading range and weather sensitivity with a more accurate identification, fewer false positives, and better low altitude performance. Moreover, usually you don't need cooling for UV sensors. So the debate between UV and infrared uh, for mouse is still out. This system doesn't require mission data files and its angular precision makes it compatible with DIRCM, uh, which are those systems that use an infrared laser to blind or burn the infrared sensors of incoming missiles, albeit the system doesn't include one. Uh, on this F-16 is just a warning system. When a threat is detected, the crew is notified and the threat can be shown on a specific screen. The system can show up to eight threats in a visualization that may help the pilot evade. At the same time, the system can automatically trigger the release of expendable countermeasures. These systems are often overlooked and they're not very popularized, but they give a very important contribution to the aircraft survivability. But these pylons feature another system that significantly increases the survivability of the aircraft. The ESIPS Plus pylon hosts an electronic warfare countermeasure system. The pylons inherited by Denmark use the American AN-ALQ-162V6. This is a system designed by Northrop Grumman to be small and compact, capable of being installed without being too much intrusive, and capable of working automatically against tracts. It is composed by two small antennas, one single black box, and a very simple console to be installed inside the aircraft. It is often used on helicopters, but in this case it could be installed inside the pylons and it helps protecting the aircraft. The actual capabilities are obviously classified. It is considered a medium sophistication system, but it is an important addition to the F-16, making them more survivable in the Ukrainian environment. So this solution deployed on the ex-Danish and Dutch F-16s is pretty unusual, and I thought it was worth going into some detail. It is a good example of how upgrading a platform and combining different systems actually work. And it, it is something you need to be aware of if you want to understand the world of military aviation. So thank you very much for getting this far into the video. It has been a pleasure and a honor to having had your time. An enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon by being a member or by providing donation with any other mean. You are absolute stars and now that I am a full-time YouTuber, you are absolutely essential for this operation. Today there is also a GoFundMe available which is connected to my first book which is in preparation. Check the link in the description if you are interested. I hope you will consider supporting the channel financially but if you can't, and it's totally okay, please just do the usual YouTube stuff, like, dislike, subscribe, hit the bell, so you won't miss anything. So, this is the end, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.